welcome to Another Level. I am your host, Apostle J.E. Bowser, and we're very glad that you're here with us today. Another Level comes to you every Thursday evening at 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Central on Free Spirit Radio. Today, we'll read and discuss from Revelations 2, 12 through 17, the church at Pergamum. Uh, my co-panelists today are Prophetess Eleanor Collins from Breath of Life Ministries in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Dr. Sylvia Marrow from Wind of Change Ministries in Sumter, South Carolina, and Prophetess Bernetta Bowser from Ephesians 4 Training Center International. As I said earlier, that we are reading about the church at Pergamum. And it reads like this, Revelation 2 and 12. And to the angel, the divine messenger of the church in Pergamum, write, These are the words of him who has and wields the sharp two-edged sword in judgment. I know where you dwell, a place where Satan sits enthroned. Yet you are holding fast to my name, and you did not deny my faith even in the day of Antipas, my witness, my faithful one, who was killed and martyred amongst you, where Satan dwells. But I have a few things against you, because you have there some among you who are holding to the corrupt teachings of Balaam, who taught Balak to put a stumbling block before the sons of Israel, enticing them to eat things that have been sacrificed to animals and to commit acts of sexual immorality. You also have some who are, you also have some who in the same way are holding to the teaching of the Nicolaitans. Therefore repent, change your inner self and your old way of thinking by seeking God's will, or else I am coming to you quickly and I will make war and fight against them with the sword of my mouth in judgment. He who has an ear, let him hear and heed what the Spirit says to the churches. To him that overcomes the world through believing that Jesus is the Son of God, to him I will give the privilege of eating some of the, ma the hidden manna, and I will give him a white stone with a new name engraved on the stone, which no one knows except the one who receives it. May God have the blessings to the readers, hearers of his word. Uh, Prophetess Bowser, would you lead us in prayer, please? Heavenly Father, we just come thanking you on tonight. Father, we come, Father, um, before you. Father, we decrease, God, so you may increase, that you will get all the glory on tonight. Father, we pray that every heart and every spirit is open, Father, Father, to hear what thus says the Lord on this line on tonight. Father, we pray, Father, we don't come um, together to tear down the church, Father, but we come, Father, that the church may be built up, Father, and we give you all the honor, the glory, and the praise, Father, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you for that prayer. While reading Revelation 2, I, I, I'll just preface it and I'm, I'm going to get out the way. Uh, I'm looking forward to hearing what is going to be said today. The premise of this, brothers and sisters, and all of you who are listening today, uh, literally around the world, is that the church is not in its full apex of capability spiritually, doing what it can do spiritually. It is not being the, the place of light. It is not producing people of salt. It is not doing all that it can do to be the powerhouse that we know it to be. It is not because we do not have the spiritual ingredients through Christ to uh, accomplish these things. That's not it at all. Rather, it's complete opposite. It is because there are uh, oppressive elements that are in place through demonic activity that are hovering over, um, um, what's the word I'm thinking of? Well, it's just locking it down and not allowing it to 
proceed in being what it needs to be for Christ. So the premise of this is, according to what the Holy Spirit told me, we address the churches. We address them as far as what the law, as the Lord sees it, and deal with the issue. When you remove the issue, you then have the church the way he sees it. And so we're noticing certain things even as we begun to deal with this mandate. And while reading Revelation 2, we begin to see a developing pattern. It's the satanic strategy which is manifesting right before our eyes. For an example, to the church in Ephesus, Satan's focus was on destroying the love and passion the people had for Christ. To the church in Smyrna, he counted the church's presence with the spiritual synagogue of Satan, releasing the spirits of suffering, slander, and fear. And tonight, Prophetess Bowser, attention is being paid to the church in Pergamum. What have you discovered in your studies? Amen, Apostle. Well, one of the first things caught on to my spirit is that when he opens, um, when he starts addressing them in verse 12, he starts out my spiritual uh, opinion with a woe because he's telling he which have the short changes. And in my studies, I found out in this particular verse, that sharp sword with two edges is the sword of judgment. So before he addresses it to anything else, he's telling you, I have my sword of judgment. So we start out with that. Yes. And then when we start moving, uh, moving farther on in the scripture, um, we want uh, his position Christ's position at this point, he's standing there with his short, uh, with the sword of judgment. And he's telling, and then he goes to tell them, um, telling them what he um, has noticed about them. He's telling them about the good. He's telling them, you know, what they've done. And, 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 and he's admonishing them for that. And he's also letting them know, I know where, where you're at. I understand that it, you're in this, you're sitting right there in Satan's court. You're sitting in his turf, and yet it's still you have still, you know, held on and did some things which I do approve of. So he 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 starts there, and then you know he lets them know that even um you you do this. If you keep keep reading, but he still has, you know, a charge against them. So, you know, I was in today, um, in today's time, a lot of times in the church today, because we want to make sure that we bring in what's going on today in the church. A lot of times, churches are doing some things that God is He is pleased with, but what about that part that He's not pleased with? Mm -hmm. You know, it's the 99% is is not enough. We've had people say they're doing 99% of what's correct, but the 99 percent is not enough. Amen. Amen. So th that was his position that I'm standing here. You know, I, I, I'm going to. T I, you know, I'm going to admonish you. I, I'm glad that you're doing that, but still. You know that that's not enough. You're still allowing all this other stuff to go uh, to happen around you, and you're doing nothing about it. Hmm. Hmm. Now, what is interesting to me in this text is that they were doing some things that God did approve of, and it was they uh, they were good things. Getting still Satan's position. Satan had a seat there. He was comfortable there. He wasn't moved by what the church was doing. Wow. 
he had us that I mean he he had a seat right there. So even the good that they were doing, it did not move him. So I say, where was their power? Where was the power of the Holy Ghost hmm. Hmm. that the demons would didn't flee? Come on, now. that's very good. So in today, we have to understand that you know we are doing uh, we may be doing the church work, but are we doing the work of the church? Yes, yes. Because had they been doing the work of the church, the demons would not have been comfortable there. Satan would not have been able to sit there in his seat and be comfortable. Mm. And when you study this, you study um, this text, you even see in one part where they had serpents that was running around or loose in, in, in the temple. Yes. Mm -hmm. Believing people, believing that the, if these serpents were tossed over, the people, the people would be healed. In the temple. Yes. Mm -hmm. Goodness. I mean, what, what, what kind of, you know, what kind of crazy is that? I mean, <laughs> what kind of crazy is that? I mean, we, we have to come to the point as the church and, it, you know, to even, even though we're in the midst of where everything that's going on around us, as the church, we cannot come, um, let the spirit of compromise, because the spirit of compromise is when we bring in what the world is doing into the church. So now the spirit of compromise has caused them now that uh, Christ is saying, I'm standing here with my sword, my judgment sword, because you allowed the spirit of compromise to come in. My goodness. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. My goodness. We have to... You know, it's not enough, uh, like I said, just, just to come together on Sunday and come together religiously and do the things. Yeah, we're doing the things according to the, uh, to the scripture, but are we doing it out of religious habit? Yes. Mm -hmm. And when we're doing it out of religious habit, habit there's no power. Goodness. Hmm. So we cannot be in, in, in that position, you know, yeah, you know, we're doing this and we're doing this and we're doing that, and, 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 but, but powerless church. And I keep going to powerless because it, where the Spirit of God is, where the anointing of God, there is liberty. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Yeah. Darkness can't be in the place where the Spirit of the Lord is at. Mm. So why was these serpents so comfortable in the church? It's a good question. So, so I just want to get, uh, just want to say this, and Apostle, I, I will be done. Um, just want to say this to the church: Don't just be faithful out of religious habit. Mm. Don't be faithful just out of religious habit, you know. Um, we have people, you know, sometimes go to church every Sunday because that was the thing to do because Grandma took you every Sunday, so you know you need to be at the temple every Sunday. Ooh, so what we're that. doing in the body, don't do it out of ritual, out of, you know, out of habit. Mm. Mm. Don't allow the spirit of compromise to come in. No matter what's going on, on around you, yes. take a stand. The Bible, take a stand as the church. Take a stand. Don't allow the spirit of compromise <laughs> to come in. Don't jump into what we have to do A, B, C, and D because everyone else is doing it and we need to draw the people in. Mm. Then the mm. spirit of compromise comes in because you want to draw the people in. Or you be quiet and you don't say anything because you don't want to uh, 
to anyone because they, they did not address what was going on. They allowed the spirit of compromise to come in and let some of those things come in the temple. My goodness. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. So I would say to the church, no matter what's going on around you, will the church stand up for anything? Will you stand up for righteousness? I understand that you have your, your, you know, your Sunday meeting and you have all, you know, what scriptures are saying, when it's said, and you can uh, call out all the demons, and uh, I understand you know all of that. But do you stand up for anything? Do you stand up against anything that's not of God? Hmm. Goodness. Will you take a stand for righteousness? Will you take a stand for holiness? Will you be the church who will not compromise? Hmm. Hmm. Prophet Espousal, where was leadership? during this time? Well, Apostle, you had leadership that, that was partaking in this. They were, they, were, they were taking part in this. Some of them were taking part of it. Some of them were taking part of, uh, of like I said, the spirit of compromise. compromise. They were uh, accepting the, the false teachings. I mean, they were taking part in this. So it's not like they were somewhere and they didn't know what was going on. They were partakers. So this gets back to another church which you spoke of with uh, Ichabod, where the leader, leadership understood exactly what was uh, the ill things that were going on in the church but chose to ignore it. Uh, in, his, in, in Eli's particular case, it was because it was his sons. But his sons did acts with the young women in the church or in the temple, if you will, and it infected everything else that was under his spiritual administration to the point where they lost everything. You're saying that this is the same premise? Yes, the same premise where leadership is not doing anything. Anything goes, and the leaders are not addressing it or doing anything about it. And so far, Apostle, so far the churches that we have addressed, including his church on tonight, all the leadership has been the same. Way. They knew what was going on, and they didn't do anything about it. Mm. Mm. Every church so far that we have addressed, the leadership knew what was going on, and they didn't do anything about it. So the spirit of religion is what you had said before, and the spirit of compromise. So, so these, these two uh, interacting uh, spirits are some of the, the ones that we're identifying, uh, among others. I'm sure we're going to hear about some other ones, but at least to the point where you are, there, these two particular spirits are um, starter spirits, if you will. Once you get leadership to not lead, and once you have a spirit of compromise to enter in as a contaminant, other things begin to um, take place. It opens doors for other uh, entities, uh, especially if Satan's seat is in that principality. That's right. That's right. Then it's what we call open season. Oh, my goodness. Then you have a legion of demons before you know it that then took over the church. Mm, mm, mm. Because you started with the spirit of compromise. And then any and everything walk through the door and, and, and it's comfortable. It's leading your worship. It's preaching behind the podium. It's your door greeter. They're handling your children. Mm, mm, mm. Wow, that is that's phenomenal, and that's the that's the entry point. <laughs> wow, that's pretty destructive. 
that's that's pretty destructive. Anything else yeah. that you you add to that, prophetess? No, apostle. That uh, that's all. Amen. Thank you for your contribution. I, that and and that's uh, prophetess Colin. That's that's a uh, <laughs> that's a pretty uh, hefty entrance as far as what kind of uh, spirits are entering into the door and how this begins to perpetrate. Uh, so could you continue speaking to us on how this, this snowball rolls down a hill and becomes something that's hard to stop? Well, just to elaborate on what Prophetess Bowser said, because, you know, she always kicked the door in her entrance. She don't just walk in the door. She kicks it open. So I'm just going to walk in behind. So since she had already opened the door, I'm going to just give a little backdrop first, and then I'm going to bring it to today. Amen. Uh, when Satan was kicked out of heaven, uh, Satan became the prince of this air. Once Satan got that power, then Adam fell. When Adam fell, then Satan got the authority. So now Satan had he had, he had well he had power and authority until Jesus came. Once Jesus came, Jesus took that authority and that power back. Yes. Those of us that received him, we now have the same power that work in us. But what Satan did that was very uh, manipulative and very strategic, he came in with keys into the church. Well, because man gets so, fatu- gets so infatuated with the world, at some point we were going to become like the world if we didn't stand for righteousness. Well, we didn't stand for righteousness. When you start becoming desensitized to certain kinds of sin, you allow all sin in, whether you like it or not. If you open the door for a lying spirit, you're going to get a manipulated spirit. Hmm. If you open the door for sexual perversion, you're going to get homosexuality. If you open the door for adultery, you're certainly going to get fornication. The door that is open in this church lies with, like Belial and Jezebel. They team together to seduce the people. Then you got Ashraf and Baal. They team together to increase the stronghold of religious spirits. Then you got Leviathan and Pride. That causes error. And you got the, the false doctrine that comes in, like the Nicolaitans brought in, where you can do something as foolish as I encountered three months ago, talking about the third eye. And referring to it yes. as though it's the Holy Spirit. Mm. When we know through all study, it's demonic. So when you have men and women that accept false doctrine, that had prideful spirits and pride in their heart, you're going to have all kind of sinful nature. Because once the door is open, he says, even when a, a, a strong, when a house is swept clean, seven more spirits are going to come in. Yes. So whenever you open that door, you open the door for a lot of different demonic activity. But I find the biggest problem being in the lack of a strong prayer life. Because Baal and ba- Balak and Balaam are not new to us. If you go back to Numbers, the 22nd chapter, it talks about how Balak sent for Balaam to come. And we wanted him to come on several occasions. He even sent word through the princes of Balak. He even sent word through the princes of Moab. But the Lord told Balaam he couldn't come. And if you get around to Numbers, the 22nd chapter in the 35th verse, that's when the Lord finally gave Balaam permission to go. And Balaam was the one that taught Balak how to treat the Israelites, to, 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 to deceive them. So what has happened in the church, we got people calling things that are not God, God, and things that 
is God, not God. Mm-hmm. So when you come in with a true, authentic anointing, you're crazy. Something's wrong with you. Don't take all that. They have no patience for it. They don't want to tarry with anyone because they want to get in, give you a word, and they want to control the service where nothing happens where the people are truly free. That's why false teachers and false prophets and false apostles have gotten into the church and they get false miracles, false signs and wonders, and they get false deliverance and false false um, prosperity gospels come into place. Because God said, truly, as your soul prospers, so shall ye. So there's no such thing as that kind of gospel. The gospel is only according to Jesus Christ and what he did at Calvary. That's it. There is no other kind of gospel to be preached. And he said if there was, it's not of him. So when I hear people say prosperity teaching, a prosperity gospel, that's not true. But the world has impacted the church so much that the church doesn't even have enough power to decipher what is God and what is not God. Because people want a feel-good message on Sunday and Wednesday, but they don't want to live anything. And see, integrity is when you live something when nobody is watching. So those yes. late-night mm-hmm. creeps in, in adultery and fornication and lying and manipulation, they take presence, president over you really wanted to get free and really wanted to live an authentic life for God. So the church, a Pergamon, is truly like Sodom and Gomorrah. And Antipas was the person that was a martyr. He was just like, he was the one that, that God asked Abraham about. Is there one? Just give me one. He couldn't find one. And Antipas in this church was a martyr, meaning some of you pastors, some of you teachers, some of you evangelists, some of you prophets, some of you apostles are going to be crucified in the church by men and women of God because you have a true authentic anointing and they don't want the truth to come into the church because they are false and they're fake and they're not of God. Goodness. And you will expose them. Mm. Goodness. So, what I'm, what I'm, what I want to, what I want to end this with for me is the Spirit speaking in the church today. You got the Holy Spirit speaking when He says, "Let let the let the church hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church." Well, you also have divination. That Spirit is. Speaking as prophets, but they're false. You got a lying spirit. That's that manipulating spirit to have you in those twenty dollars and those fifty dollar lines. You got mm-hmm. false teaching that's teaching false doctrine that is still uh, under the law that is that is not of God. About dresses and all this foolishness that has nothing to do with the Word of God. Then you have familiar spirit that's manipulating the people and telling them that they're going to get a this in three days and that in three days and it's not happening and they're getting angry with God and they're falling away from the church when a man is the one that lied to you was not God. Then you got a Jezebel spirit mm-hmm. that is sitting there and controlling that controlling spirit that is sitting there controlling what's going on even some pastors don't even have the power to make decisions because you got certain deacons or you got certain assistant pastors that are making decisions because of what they give to the church and they are sitting on the church with those controlling spirits and not allowing the uncompromised word of God to go forth. Goodness. Last but not Goodness. least, we got to bind up the strong man. The strong man we bind up in the church would be the principalities and the powers and the rulers of darkness and the wickedness in high places, then you're going to do that through prayer. That means you can't have 500 people in your church on the five are going to intercessory prayer. Yes. Mm-hmm. You can't have that. You've got to have a greater 
a, a, a greater group in intercessory prayer holding the church together in prayer. So you can recognize spirits when they're not of God when they come into the house. You got to hear the spirit of God. You got to sit and listen and get get so 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 into him that you become you get so like you become like Enoch. You start to walk into God. You got yes. to hear and be sensitive to his voice. Mm. Then the last one is loose. You got the loose legions of angels to encamp around the church, to encamp around the ministry. You 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 got the ex God for angelic host to lead up to God. Warring angels to be on assignment. You got to ask God to send Michael and, and, and Uriel and, and Gabriel down to oversee everything. Because the archangels oversee the church. Yes. You got to get on your face before God. So we can bind up and loose the church from these strongholds of Python and Leviathan and serpentine, and them snakes that was in the church, the snakes were in the church because they didn't have any power to put them out. Goodness. Hmm. Goodness. And then to add to that, prophetess, is, is, is the fact that the Nicolaitans were also teaching and suggesting very strongly sexual immorality. Well, you know, even right now, we're not, we're not addressing it with our young people. I'm, I'm having more of this to happen as I go out. Incubus and succubus spirits are, are mm-hmm. coming to their bedroom mm-hmm. and having their way with them because they don't know what to do. They don't understand it. I mean, we need to start talking to our children about these spirits. This is where you're getting all these different types of sexual immoralities in our children, all these, 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 these abominations, these spirits are having their way. Yes, yes, yeah. I remember a few years ago, Prophetess, um, my, my wife and I were pastoring a church uh, outside of Houston, and we had not encountered this level of spiritual invasion. Um, at the place where we were practicing, you know, we we were worshiping at, we did not realize that a couple of blocks down the street was a a living, live witch coven. Um, Mm -hmm. And one of the uh, young girls who was coming to our church was looking for a a form of deliverance. She wanted to be delivered. She sat there and explained to us that in her bedroom, at her home, there were, uh, there was Images that would come out of the wall and make love to her. Yes. And Apostle, I was looking at a, a, some, some dresses online. It's called Collection, Pyramid Collection. That's what it's called, Pyramid Collection. When you go into Pyramid Collection, one of the sections under the dresses, beautiful flowing dresses, is called Wicca. Guess what You're they kidding. have on a Wicca page? They huh. have witches' outfits. And which book, Wicca books, so that you can read about it and become a Wicca. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Wicca is the practice of using nature against mankind, am I correct? Yes, yeah, and it's witchcraft. Yeah. It's, it's witchcraft. It, 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 yeah, it, it's witchcraft. And it also it deals with Wiccans are also witches and, and, and warlocks. Mm hmm. Sorcery. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Of brothers and sisters and in Christ, the latest, I, one, the latest one that I've had, I've had to really pray for Apostle is Mammy Water, uh, because we have such an invasion of of um, foreign demonic activity coming into this region. Mammy Water has taken over a strong lust spirit. Huh. So yeah. we're in trouble. The church is in trouble. So as I'm as we're going toward Dr. Marrow's narrative, we're looking at this big ball of fire, if you will. It 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 started with just 
something like a spirit of, of um, religion and compromise, and now it has grown and blazoned into uh, spirits of deception, control, manipulation, um, it, it, which came in through false teachings and familiar spirits and divination. I mean, there, there, there is no, this is, this is something, this church was really dealing with a lot. And the part that I focused on personally, and I'm just interjecting just a little bit, was that seat of Satan, that, that he, had, he has his throne in this place, in this territory. Apos, uh, 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 apostles are territorial conscious. Uh, so when I read it, I saw, I saw the Lord in a position with his sword in heaven. But I see Satan with his throne in Pergamum. And he's saying, I rule this. The arrogance, the, the, the you know, just, just the pure arrogance, he's going to have. And the church was positioned there specifically for certain reasons, to countersend this, to abolish this. Instead, this thing rolled into the church and just did a contamination. And I said that, brothers and sisters in Christ, because this is some of the things, as the panelists are explaining to you, and Dr. Con, uh, Dr. Um, Marrow is getting ready to bring more, uh, more, more clearly to light. These are the types of things that are active right now. This is not prophecy. This is not, uh, this is not the witchy poo stuff. This, this is what's going on in the church right now. It's uh, pastors, bishops, whatever. This is what's holding your church back from being what it can be. And uh, Dr. Merrill, um, there are spiritual weapons. There are spiritual weapons uh, available to us, available to us today. They were available to the Church of Pergamum, but apparently they weren't using them. What's going on and what kind of, what kind of weaponries are we looking at using to stop this flow? Dr. Merrill? Can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Hey, Amen. I was saying that um, I'm just excited from listening to both women of God, both prophetess, that they touched on so much and, and to bring it all, you know, like to pull the string tighter. Okay, I God dealt with me in a different area, but mm. it's the same thing because it deals with the leaders. The word says that the weapons, come on here, of our warfare are not carnal. Yes. Not at all. Carnal is natural. Not at all. And see, you were saying something, and you were touching on, because, you know, I, I research. Okay, the seat of Satan was the altar of Pergamon. Mm -hmm. was the altar. And these other Greek gods worshipped at the altar, Zeus and all of them. Mm -hmm. Okay? Amen. John the Apostle ordained Antipas as a bishop of Pergamon. Antipas was a bishop hmm. during the reign of the Roman Emperor Donamon. So Antipas was a bishop. God says that he was what? A faithful witness of Jesus Christ. This is what's happening in your churches, you have faithful people that have been there for years, and you let Satan come in Ooh, Jesus. and wow. set up his seat at the altar. Come on here. Let Satan come in and do praise and worship. Let Satan come in and tell the mother board and the deacon board and whatever else what to do. And they've been with you 15, 20 years. Yes. Come on here. And then the word says that what was my faithful martyr. Do you know Antipas was 83 years old and was burned alive? Yes. Come on. Yes. Man. Yes. It's mm -hmm. in a brazen pot, meaning in a big pot. Alive. Come on here. He wasn't dead yet. 
bringing it now to where you are, you allow them to come in and kill them right in front of you. Goodness. And you do nothing, like Prophetess Bowser said. And you sit there and watch them die. Come on here. I heard one of the prophets said, it's going to be a woe unto you. Mm. Because mm. you're allowing That's so Satan to sit at the seat of the altar and Goodness. kill them. Mm. Come on here. Goodness. This is why the church is ineffective. Because why? You're killing the foundation. Lord. Jesus. Mm. You're allowing Satan to come in and loosen, come on here, and loosen the foundation up to the point that they'll either leave or you're going to kill them with them. Because they're going to start talking to you as a leader. You know what? We don't really need mother over here no more. Y'all crazy. Yes. Come on here. Yes. Mm, mm, mm. You're allowing them to walk in their dress any old kind of way. And you want to sit up here, because see, let me tell you what, sin has an odor. You walk in here smelling like reproach, but you want to do praise and worship. The devil is a liar. <laughs> but um, Satan says, it's okay. They're going to be all right. Mm. So now you've got that stench all in the air. Yes. Mm. But your foundation smells it, but you're saying, they, they old. You know how they are. Come on here. I'm helping somebody that's listening. Yes, yes, Lord. Mm. You know how they are. They all said in their ways. They don't really. No, sweetie. Sin has an odor. I said you, I said you walk in smelling like reproach. Yes, you do. Mm. Good. Come on here. Hmm. That it's okay. You can go ahead and sleep with him. Y'all getting ready to get married anyway. But there's no ring. Come on, leaders. This is what you're allowing. Prophetess Bowser said that. This is why there's no power here. The greatest weapon and the greatest weapon and the greatest weapon, I said it three times, is repentance. Yes. Thank you. Mm. That's the greatest weapon against Satan. When you say to God, I repent, I ask for forgiveness, I need you to allow grace and mercy to abound, come on here. Now Satan is like, uh-oh, something's getting ready to happen. We need to go back and strategize real quick. Let's throw a wrench in here. Yes. And this is what happens. Okay. Mm. Now, the false prophet Balaam, now everybody is looking like, so now what do we do? Do we believe that or not? Come on here. You've mm. allowed Satan to come in, take up residence, build his own altar there, right in front of everybody. And now what? Again, the foundation is destroyed. And Thank then the Lord Jesus. says what? Repent or else I will come unto you quickly. This even goes back to what we talked about last week. They're in the, the, the severe stage of persecution now. Okay? Yeah. Some of you churches are in that one now. You're in the severe stage. Because he said right there, he said, and I will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. Jesus. Meaning, I'm coming, and I dare you. I'm going to send my apostles and prophets to root up. Come on here. Yes. Yes. I'm going to send the prophets to root it up, and I'm going to call in the apostles to lay the foundation right for you. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's what we do. That's our job. We're trying to help you. This Amen. is what we do. But you're praying and interceding and crying out and travailing. But then when God sends us, you don't want us. Oh, Jesus. Because we're Come not on. trying to take over. Mm. We're trying to help Jesus. you. There you go. Okay. Jesus. Thank you. Because in this time, this is what every, 
This is what all seven churches, he's saying, I got an on against you. And I'm trying to send the help that you keep crying and begging for. Come on, woman of God. Mm. And once we lay the foundation correctly for you, repentance must come. Yes. Yes. Or you're out of order. Yeah. Yeah. Repentance is your greatest weapon against Satan. Because now why? Now there's been a different mind thinking now. The mind is something. Come on here. So when your mindset has changed, see, it looks at the leader. Then everything else will fall into place. Yeah. Then somebody in the foundation will say, Phew, God answered my prayer. We can come on and stay now. Now we can get with him because I see and I hear something else. Hmm. Because there's a sound that the Lord is looking for in this time. Hear me. Yes, yes. Come on now. Yes. And it has mm -hmm. to come. It's got to come from the church. Come on here. Yes. Mm. Yes. This is why I believe he's addressed these seven churches. And each time he says, I know your works. Don't think you don't know. I know what you're doing. Whether it's good, bad, or indifferent, I know your works. But I've still got an art against you. I need you to correct this before I come, because I come quickly. Come on here. Yes. Mm. Correction. Mm. So I say all that to say repentance. Yes. Don't let Satan come in and set up shop and uproot your foundation. Come on here. Your foundation gets wavery, it's going to fall. Mm, mm, mm. And then Satan will walk right out laughing, saying, look what we did. Look at that. Okay, Good. mission accomplished. Yes. And then they go on to another church. Goodness. So, yes, repentance is your weapon. Use it wisely. Use it wisely. Mm. Amen. Yes. My goodness. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow, wow. Um, this has been very powerful. And for those of you who are, are listening, um, Dr. Merrill touched on something that's very strategic as well. Not every leader knows about the demonic forces that are encasing his or her ministry or church. And even if you knew about it, not every leader knows how to get rid of them. Amen. This is, this is what this whole platform that the Holy Spirit set up is about. We're not only broadcasting this to make you aware of it, but if you need help, we're here to help you. You may Amen. need a telephone call, an email, you may need us there in person. Everybody that you heard tonight, brothers and sisters, leaders, everyone that you heard tonight is equipped on what they are speaking about. They know these are generals. These are, these are the Holy Spirit's uh, spirit, uh, uh, special forces. They can come in and root this joker out. They will not, if, if you give them a chance, will come in and literally root this out so that there would not be that demonic power, presence, or force operating and uh, holding you back. But you have to be honest with yourself. You have to be in a position of looking at your church that you're the leader of. Or if you're a member of the congregation or, uh, uh, and you're looking at this and, and you're feeling like, I know that there's more, that I, but I'm not getting any more. Why can't I, I feel like there's a more that needs to be released, but it's not here. It's not that your leader doesn't have it. It's that something is hindering your leader from releasing it and is holding him back. There is a lot of things going on in play that disallow the church to be the center point of light that Christ talked about when he said, you are the light to the world. 
It's not just he's saying, I am. He said that too. But the delegation of authority and responsibility has been handed over to those of us who believe, those of us who dare to try and believe who Jesus Christ is and release the Holy Spirit and the power of God through us to act as agents and ambassadors and bringing light into this dark world. This is what it's about. And here is the warfare confronting you. you. If you are not seeing signs, wonders, and miracles for those that are coming through the doors of your local congregation and assembly on a regular basis, then something is going wrong, okay? There, this should not be something that happens upon occasion. This is not the extraordinary. This is supposed to be normal. And it's supposed to be normal not to the people who come to church regularly, but those who are coming out from the world into us, the church, so that they can get delivered and set free. This is what it's about. And if these activities, like, the, like we've read in the book of Acts, like, like the epistles are, are always talking about, if these types of activities are not on some kind of regular basis occurring, then you are dealing with demonic forces that are not allowing you to impact your church and your community, and it's stopping you. You're just like Pergamum. You're being hindered and stopped from doing what you can do. It is really that simple. So do not be afraid to ask for help. Do not be afraid to say, look, I would actually like to see what the church would be like if it was free of demonic activity and borders and restrictions. What would the church be like if, the, if it just is all lit up and the people are filled with God's spirit and repentance and, 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 and all the other activities that God has for us, all the weapons that Christ has afforded us are in active in our hands? What would it be like? If you can be honest enough to ask yourself that question and say, I am not experiencing that right now, then this is not only the program for you, but this is the group of people, God's special forces right here, the group of people that you will come and be a tremendous blessing. And no, ma'am, no, sir, Everybody on this line, categorically, I promise you, will tell you, we don't have no 50, 100, and $1,000 lines. This is not what it's about. It's, it's, it's not about this. It's about freeing God's people, because look what's happening with the world, and what is the church doing about it? I hope that, I, that makes sense. I didn't mean to preach, but I wanted to get the message out that this is more than just a broadcast. Collectively, this is a ministry, and we're spread out all over the United States. We're in different locations talking to you. So we're strategically located so that we can get to you if we need to get to you physically. You know, we would scrap it, put it together, and come see you if we had to. This is how important this is at such a time as this. This is strategy we're talking and every time you hear one of the broadcasts, every one of the panelists will not only identify the spirit that's hovering and operating in those local assemblies, but will give you strategic keys as to how to eliminate, put a dent in that, move them, let them know they, just, they are not going to run roughshod over you and God's house. Amen? I just wanted to put that out there. Um, I can use a little help because I'm losing my voice. Somebody help me a little bit, please. Thank you. Well, the, <laughs> the, the very essence of this is that um, the revelation of all of this is, is that God is requiring us to live holy. Holiness is what allows the righteousness of God to be displayed before the people. Perfection was in Jesus. I'm not saying we're going to be perfect. I'm saying we have to live holy. That is something that has become a lifestyle on a daily basis. And to add to the final little part of this is, no one is trying to chastise or rebuke any pastor 
apostle, prophet, teacher, evangelist. What we're trying to do, or minister, or bishop, what we're trying to do is in love, because this is all about love for us, because we love the church just like God loves the church, just like Jesus loves the church, just like the Holy Spirit loves the church. We love the church so much that we would take time out to see where the problems are in the church and try to address those problems with a proper strategy because no one wants to talk about problems without a resolution. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Well said. Well said. Prophetess Bowser, closing remarks? I think we lost her. I can't hear her. Prophetess Bowser, are you still there? Amen. I'm here. Okay. Now we can hear you. Okay. Um, I would uh, just like to say uh, everyone on tonight, again, um, gave strategic downloads. And again, uh, like Dr. Merrill was saying earlier, um, stop rejecting the help that God will send you. Um, mm. So that that's the big thing. You know, the apostles and prophets are two, and I'm not saying we're the only ones. I'm not saying we're the only ones that have the answers. But we are part of the fivefold that um, we are rejected from the church. So when God sends you the apostle or the prophet or the teacher or the evangelist, you need to embrace what you, uh, like Dr. Merrill said, uh, embrace what you've been praying and asking God for. Don't reject, don't reject the help. This is about um, edifying and building up um, the house of God, not tearing it down. Um, tearing it down in the sense that we want to make sure that uh, the de the house is clean because God does want his house in order. Amen. Amen. So there are, so there are special forces that he, he is putting together and he has handpicked to put together for this because he wants his house in order. Amen. Amen. And Amen. I thank you for that. And before I turn it over to uh, Dr. Merrill, for closing remarks and prayer, um, I'd like to just say that uh, Apostle Louis Rosario, who normally is with us, is traveling. We, we are grateful for him to do this traveling and, and pray that he has traveling grace on his Amen. endeavors. Um, we, we certainly miss him, but uh, if I know him, he'll listen. He's going to listen in on the uh, rebroadcast and or the archives. And so uh, to you, Dr. Uh, Rosario, we, we pray that you and your family and the ministry – will prosper everywhere that you may go during your uh, travels tonight. Uh, Dr. Merrill, closing remarks and uh, prayer. Thank you very much. Amen. The closing remarks is just like both Prophet has said and um, even Apostle Bowser. You, you know, we come in no other name but the name of Jesus. And if you look in Revelation, Jesus addresses the head. He said, to the angel of this house. There you go. <laughs> Come on here. He's Amen. addressing the leaders yes. because the oil runs from the head down. Everything mm. starts with you. So everybody's looking at you. How did you let this happen? How did you do this? How did you do that? We get caught up in the wrong things. It's not about prestige. It's not about you got this and you got that. Each of us on this panel... I know for a fact that the Lord has said that we have the anointing that destroys the yokes. This is why we're not loved and liked and, and all of that. But now in this time, God is sending us because yes. we do have what you need, and we come in no other name. We're not coming to take your people. We have stuff to do, believe me. <laughs> Each of us have things yes. to do. But yes. now there's been a clarion call and a special mandate for us now. Because the Bible says the deep calleth unto the deep. Now he, come on here, he's calling unto the deep, which is us. Not mm. that we're deep, but the depth in us. 
Let me make that clear. It ain't about nobody on this panel. It's about the kingdom. Amen. Mm, mm, mm. So he addresses the head. He said, to the angel of this church, I know your works, but I've got an ought against you. So this is where your apostles, your prophets, everybody has to come together, your watchmen, your travailers. Everybody has to be in place because some things can't come in if y'all would be on your wall mm. uh -huh. and Good. do what you do. We allow things to come in. We open portals that we don't even know that we've opened by connecting with the wrong people. And that's a whole nother program. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but we do <laughs> yes, bless that's the another name one. of the Lord for all you listening Dr. Rosario, amen, Father God, in the name of Jesus. God, we just thank you, God, for this time again, God, that, that you allow us to speak to your people, God, as you have spoken to us. God, we thank you for traveling mercies, oh God, in the name of Jesus, for the Rosario family. Oh God, continue to order his steps, God. I declare and decree that the land shall yield itself to him wherever he goes, whatever they touch, oh God. I know it's for your glory. The radio broadcast, everybody that has a part in it, the mandate on Dr. Bowser's life and his wife and Prophetess uh, Collins, to God be the glory. We bless the name of the Lord because God gets the glory out of everything that we say and do. So until next time, we do love you, and we pray that you've gotten something from us. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus' name, amen. Good night, everybody. God bless. Don't forget, uh, next Thursday night. Same time, same station, 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Central. Uh, this is Apostle J.E. Bowser and panel saying good night, God bless. Until next time, amen.